here. So, hello. Um, this is the, this is the first time I do a live in social media. I never I never done it in my life. So same. Sorry if we <laughs> if we are not like up to the standards in social media. But okay, my name is Carolina. I worked for Keiko since um, three years ago. Yeah. And I'm in charge of the marketing department um, of the meal plans and uh, yeah, and the fuel of life as well. Cool. And I'm Eva. I'm Eva Gesemi, and I'm a psychologist at the Maple Tree Center. And happy to be here today. We're going to talk about motherhood. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. So. Carolina, let's start a little bit with just some personal experiences. Yeah. 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 Tell me tell me about your motherhood journey, pregnancy, prenatal, postnatal, <laughs> anything you want to share. Well, um, I have to say, um, it's been an adventure. I, I'm a mother of one and I would say that's enough for now. <laughs> um, there's, you know, like motherhood is like, it, it actually changed your life forever. Uh, but you don't realize how it's going to change until you're there. So, yeah, basically, uh, I can tell my pregnancy was pretty easy. Um, we, uh, that happened beginning of the 2020. So it was like the, all the, the lockdown came and uh, mm. I was virtually working from, from home and you know like if, if i had to take a little nap in between it was super nice and easy so yeah pregnancy out of this difficult part of going to the appointments in the hospital because obviously there was like lockdown and then you have to ask for a permission then with all of that everything was great um i never since i started in kcal i've been um on the meal plan always uh, i didn't stop because obviously um, I, I was still working from home, so uh, I needed to eat at some point. So it was like, you know, <laughs> yes, the food was ready there and you don't have to stop. Like uh, the, the dynamic and everything changed, but uh, I kept my, my nutrition the same. Uh, I kept moving, I, I, I did a lot of exercise, whatever you say. Before I get pregnant, I also was active a lot. So for me, it was like stay still, it was not an option. So whatever we, I could do, I did. Uh, I continue with yoga, I continue with uh, a little bit like uh, low impact hit classes at home, like yeah. everything at home, like everybody was um, um, doing. And uh, yeah, so that was my pregnancy experience, like it's super mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you become like to get comfortable to sleep and <laughs> You know, but um, everything normal, I, I would say I had a very good pregnancy. She was mm -hmm. really great with me. And, uh, and I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. It's so nice what to hear you? your good, good pregnancy experiences. And I think for anyone who's listening who might have had not so positive experiences, don't worry, we'll also talk about, you know, the, 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 the good, the bad, the beautiful and the, and the not so pretty parts. Um, so my pregnancy experience, I have two children mm -hmm. and my first one was now five years old. Um, that pregnancy was incredibly tough for me because I feel like I just had no zero preparation on what to expect, on what pregnancy is going to be like. Um, I had just kind of seen in movies, you know, okay, when I get sick, okay, it <laughs> looks okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And you know, but for me, it was just like a lot of, it wasn't morning sickness, it was all day sickness, I was throwing up a lot. Um, and then also, I think mentally, just when you don't have that preparation, mm -hmm. mental preparation, when you're getting all these sort of physical and bodily symptoms, you start to feel like, what's happening to me? Mm -hmm. What is what is this? What's going on here? I couldn't sleep very well. So it was a tough journey. Medically, I can't say that there was anything wrong, so I was really lucky in that sense during my pregnancy. But it was just this like awareness or lack of awareness mm -hmm. um, about what to expect that was really challenging. And with my second one, I think I was much more prepared and it was a little bit easier. And I think you hear that quite a lot. And, like you knew what but, was coming. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it was with the second one, and I, and that's it for me. Two is uh, enough as well. So um, not having not having any any other kids. But 
I thought it would be helpful maybe if we can talk a little bit about what are some you know common experiences or questions that come up for people and but also to talk about our own personal experience through that yeah um what was something that you went through so because it sounds like your pregnancy was good so what was it like like in terms of the birth and afterwards you know then baby's here then then what um i would say like you will never be prepared for such an experience i would describe uh, the mm-hmm. birth uh, as I say, as an intense experience like mm-hmm. it's uh, i don't know maybe uh, because of my personality or who am i i i, I wouldn't i couldn't be prepared for that mm-hmm. ever like no matter what type of course I take, mm-hmm. no matter what um, book I read, uh, by the way, I didn't read any book, <laughs> any at all. Uh, but I, I think that no one can prepare you for what you can experience. It's the, mm-hmm. a, a, it's the most beautiful, but at the same, the, more, the most intense mm-hmm. thing that I've ever experienced. It was, uh, I can remember it, like, like it was yesterday mm-hmm. and they, people say that you will forget about it mm-hmm. in, in, in some time I don't think so mm-hmm. I think you keep it for yourself <laughs> I don't know from your side but I, I don't think I'm gonna forget ever but I could tell my daughter today that was the, the best day of my life mm-hmm. but um, also it was intense and, and intense new, is, yeah, yeah like, intense is a good way to, to describe it how would you yeah. say intense sounds like it i think it's like the both yeah. sides right like it's like uh, it exactly good but also was like i never felt that way before right. um unique mm-hmm. it's a unique experience and um but yeah it was it was it was amazing when you see mm-hmm. her little face there mm-hmm. like whoa hello mm-hmm. there it is it was awesome but yeah um what about you what was the yeah, my birth, um, again, two different experiences, and mm-hmm. I think every pregnancy and every birth can be completely yeah. unique and different. Um, with my first one, I went into emergency C-section, I had all these ideas about wanting to do hypnobirthing and water births and, you know, all sorts of, that like, the first ideals one the second, with the first the one. The first one, yeah. I had, like, a lot of ideals in, in my mind and, and just that kind of this initial disappointment that it didn't work out. And I think something that I also hear, hear quite a lot in therapy from people is that you, it feels like a personal failure at yeah, first exactly. when it doesn't go as planned. Do you know, do you know what I found, like, very um, difficult? It was, like... Everybody was asking you to have a plan, a birth plan, right? I think a plan will set expectations Mm -hmm. and not set the expectations is what makes you feel bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't know how how good it is to push women to actually have a an actual written because they ask you to write your your birth plan and and share with your obviously your partner and then the hospital and Mm -hmm. but but. In my experience, nothing went according mm-hmm. to my plan or whatever I yeah. put in a plan. So I, I don't think that people should be pushing women to have. You have a really good point life. because it's not, yeah, you have a really good point because it's like it's helpful to have a rough idea. Mm. So you know some some ideas about how you wish things would go, but. A little bit more guidance for women that this is only aspirational. It's yeah. not a benchmark. It of doesn't success. need to happen like that. Exactly. And, uh, if it doesn't, you don't need to feel bad. bad exactly. Right. The same comes out with the lactation, for instance, like mm-hmm. breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. Right. That on its own is a whole. It's a whole journey, but it's yeah. also like uh, I feel it's it's if it doesn't happen, it's okay mm-hmm. as well. Like it's not it's not like something that you should be feel guilty for not. Mm-hmm happening in the, the, the way that you plan or mm-hmm. should be it's, it's yeah. not like this. I think yeah. there's a lot of pressure there is a lot of pressure there and is, there not is. meeting the expectations is what make you feel like you're mm-hmm. not like I don't know Absolutely. What about mothers who aren't able to breastfeed? Exactly. So yeah. we have a, I've seen a lot of cases of moms who can't produce enough milk because there just isn't any and they feel really guilty for mm-hmm. using formula mm-hmm. or finding a way to supplement their well, child's nutrition. That's it, right? Like it's, it's because someone tells you like this should be this way, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know, in your case, did you have the... 
So there's obviously, there's a lot of awareness raising about, mm. uh, you know, breast is best and mm. breast milk is the healthiest. And I do believe in that. Yeah, I have no 100%. objections on that. Um, 100%. I think though psychologically and emotionally we need to do a better job of taking care of women who are aspiring to do that but having a challenging experience yeah. trying to breastfeed so that they know okay first of all like if you at the end and you try everything and you still decide okay not, like, I want to keep going through with it it's your choice you know yeah, like feeling exactly. like not being shamed for for choosing or going this way or that way and 100%. i remember in my own experience with my first which i had a really hard time breastfeeding um i had a i had a friend who kept reminding me just remember fed is best fed is best it's not breast is best necessarily as we know nutritionally yeah. we understand but at the end of the day like if you're gonna be miserable and in pain and suffering Don't. and going through all that then how is that going to affect also the bond? Mm -hmm. Because uh, postpartum blues and postpartum depression is real. And we have to really like look out for that and be aware of that, not just in ourselves, but also in other women yeah. around us. And I think that's also the responsibility of the community to look out for each other. Exactly. Like I think is the less pressure you can put, like don't, like people should be able, like women should be able to choose whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, they Absolutely. believe is the best and each family, each uh, each couple and each little family is making a unique, decision. yeah, it's making a decision. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So, uh, um, yeah, that was a breastfeeding like, experience. Yeah. Like, it was tough, but it was all right. Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot of opinions, right? Like going like, this is the best, this is not. I always um, thought, well, in my case, I, I, I've been working um, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a working mom and I plan to continue working. Mm -hmm. So since the beginning, I was like, okay, here's a plan. And, and since I'm going to go back to work at some point, let's just start putting mm -hmm. stuff together to towards that plan, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously I have other opinions saying like, no, the free demand and uh, the baby will, you know, like uh, eat Need whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, but no, I mean, yes and no, like, let's mm -hmm. do it like something in the middle so we can, uh, uh, and, 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 and a lot of opinions, like even the doulas and, and you know, like uh, medical, yes. and then your mom and his mom and wow. everybody is yes. like that, okay, what is best, what is not, a lot of pressure, again. And maybe it would be helpful to also mention, like, culturally, yes. right? So where do you, if you don't mind sharing like where are you from where's your partner from right. and what are the cultural elements there around we, like family culture you know not just ethnicity we are from Mexico both mm -hmm. uh, we uh, but we spent a lot of time out of Mexico since we were very young mm -hmm. so we kind of figure out and find uh, found our feet ourselves like uh, as a couple as mm -hmm. a family mm -hmm. um, but I would say in Mexico the, the culture related to family is very very is, is similar to this region mm -hmm. a lot is very similar like family is very important for us yes. as it is for um, for this region as well mm -hmm. right like so family comes first and then um, you are very I mean we are very close to our families but uh, as I said, like we decided to stay a little bit apart. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't, uh, it, the pressure is still there. Like there's a lot of things that your mom will do different, uh, you know, like your, your aunties, your, and they express themselves all the time. So and they you know, let you know what they get. Yeah, they let you know, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's pretty similar, right? In, in, where yeah. are you from? So I'm originally Iranian and uh, dual citizen Iranian Canadian. Um, but I grew up for one third of my life, I'm not saying how old I am, um, <laughs> but one third of my life in in uh, Iran and the rest of the other two thirds in Europe and mm -hmm. North America. Um, I'm really lucky in that my mom is very much like you are your own person you do what you feel is right mm -hmm. you your generation actually knows better than us and so she doesn't have this kind of approach of like we know better you know i raised right. two kids and i know how to do it so you have to follow 
but you hear that, um, you hear that. there's definitely yeah. some of that going on sometimes it's like oh we did it this way and we turned out okay and you turned out okay yeah. even with the, giving them water no like yeah. at the beginning it was like well the doctors are like I, it's the breastfeeding is, is the only thing that Enough. I should it's do yeah. and and no water needed yeah and yeah. they were like how come like yeah just when a little bit of water, I think it's not gonna harm. I'm like, yeah, but I, I I've been told a different thing. So yeah. sometimes you are facing like all these little things, little little, little things, right? Like a uh, water or yeah, or, or the, how come how many <laughs> yeah, how many yeah, yeah. Of food? Oh like, no, but yeah. the air the air conditioning is not good. I was like, but she was born with the air conditioning in the room, right. so uh, right. see so that little yeah. things that you always like. Um, listening other opinions but I think it's, this is like a non-stop thing. totally and I'm loving that you're talking about like all the different factors in our experience as a mom meaning it's you know you're talking about okay like I mentioned a few things around mentally right like yeah. mental preparation the way you're talking about is around like the body how we take care of our baby's body right mm -hmm. it's like you yeah. know the, the warmth the environment the, the, the food um, and then we're also talking about community and the reason I'm mentioning these different layers is one of the ways that I sometimes like to assess with clients or with friends or just uh, for myself of like how how balanced am I living yes. is to look at the different uh, elements of balance and so um, we look at uh, the mind the body uh, environment community and spirituality mm. and you can just you know you can divide life into so many different like if it's a pie you can divide it into mm -hmm. like thousands of pieces but this is one way that it can be divided and I've taken that from um, a, an author and a, a book called consciousness medicine which we've published for mm -hmm. Aurelia psychology and made it available for free so any of the viewers who are interested it's uh, it's a really good resource to evaluate okay how am I doing in the different parts of my life and what important. needs attention it's what very very important attention. I think when you, when you especially when you become a mom is you go back to uh, identify who you are in this new stage you redefine your yourself as a person as a mom and uh, as a partner as well yes. and uh, and and then you need to identify like, how what's going to be that balance right like uh, as I said like I always uh, thought in my mind that I'm going to go back to work and but that requires also like emotionally mentally uh, preparation right like you have to be comfortable with your decisions and uh, that's number one and all the people around you if they support you this that's what makes you feel like okay you, you're doing well like it's fine it's not gonna it, nothing's gonna happen so um, yeah I think important very important to redefine your pie, to say like this. Exactly. You just so reminded exactly. me about talking about work, um, and I, I wonder what your experience was with that. It's like, for me, coming to work was actually like the best break. <laughs> like, I, 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 I loved when I was able to come back to work, <laughs> because I love, I love my job, so it, it really felt yeah. like a good experience. And then I remember having a conversation with my therapist, and saying to her, oh man, I'm so tired. And even though I'm at work and I do the things I like, I'm just exhausted. And she's like, okay, but work is not really a break. You know, it's still work. <laughs> so, so, and I think a part of me, because I was feeling a little yeah. bit guilty about taking myself, my, my presence away from my child or children, I then was like, okay, I'm gonna work harder to make up for it. Yeah. And I'm also not going to use any time to take care of myself because I don't have any time left. It's right. work. And then if I have any time in the evening, I need to spend it with the kids. And my therapist made a really good point. It's like, but you you still need some time to yourself. You know, like, it's okay. You need a break. So I was just wondering, what was your experience and how did you, you know, take care of yourself? You mentioned exercise. You mentioned Yeah, no, well. oh, since, since I could, I, I, I just, um, and I, I mommy's guilt will always be there I think mm -hmm. I think because uh, since the very early stage I decided to go back to do some exercise whatever I could do right like so go back uh, but again it's, 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 it's constantly um, following you these these little guilty talking to you is like oh but you should be I mean 
she's less than three months old like mm. she, you should be there you know like and I said like no like and then the other side is talking saying like no 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 you need to be um, yourself you need to put together yourself so she can see that so right. I inclined to that direction so I said yeah. like, okay if I'm okay she's gonna be okay so when did I you learn that how did you learn oh that? it took like I think sometimes I'm still questioning my, myself like uh -huh. it's not it's not like a, a one day to another process. It's something that you, right. you keep working, I think. Because uh, even my partner, is, sometimes he tells me when we go out for, because we take like a little breaks, right? And um, nice. during the weekend, so the baby is nice. with the nanny. And then we take, like, we go to the cinema or we yeah. go to like a date, a date, yeah. something. And sometimes he tells me like, I feel guilty because I, I'm not like a, a full time dad when I can do it. Mm. So like yes, but exactly what you were saying. You also need to some time for yourself, right? Like um, personally, my 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 husband's been super super involved, like hundred percent involved with the since the pregnancy with everything. Like uh, I'm telling you, like he's hands on, yeah, very hands on. Mm -hmm. I cannot be more lucky because he's oh, like hundred percent. Uh, and I think the experience will be like completely different if if it wasn't not like that way, you know. Right. And we know that that definitely can be the case. Oh, yes. And we definitely. hear that a lot. Definitely. Of like the balance at home is not I right there. I couldn't think, uh, I mean, to do everything by myself, mm -hmm. like impossible. Like I admire uh, all the moms are there, I mean, out mm -hmm. there who has been doing this alone, mm -hmm. including mine, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. no help at all. How? How? <laughs> I admire her, truly, truly admire her. You, your mom was same Yeah, mom. I mean, my dad used to travel a lot. So she traveled a lot, right. Yeah, so she practically was, speaking, it's like as if she was a single yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, he could help whenever he comes, but it was his fault. And right? the expectations and, are completely different. Completely cultural different. expectations. Completely different. different. Yeah. So, um, right now, I think that's the other good thing about, mm -hmm. uh, about our generation, that mm -hmm. They, they get involved, much more involved than before. Right. And I really, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And that totally changes the, the, the full experience. Right, uh, right, yes, uh, absolutely. And the a quick shout out, I think, especially to like single moms out there on Mother's Day, because I feel like they, they deserve their own special Mother's Day as well, yeah. besides regular Mother's Day. It's, it's a whole other, yeah, layer yes. of of um, involvement and in, into into the child's life. It's like I can't I can't imagine it, but I know and I heard of many different stories of there are some there's some slight pros where which is around like you know you're in charge yeah <laughs> so there's you never have to worry about differing opinions but um, but co-parenting if you're separated that can be really really challenging. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that can be a huge issue and can, can cause so much stress. Um, and then, of course, uh, yeah, just parenting and taking care of. I can barely keep up with my kids. Um, like uh, the the emails I get from school and nursery and. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> How old is your other? Mine is only one year old, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. she's gonna start probably uh, nursery soon, a right. couple of months or something. Right. Yes. But I think that's an, uh, uh, another level, right? I, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> a new level. Over the last um, six months, I have forgotten two birthdays, <laughs> and I and then the the actually the um, the embarrassment mm -hmm. of like you know admitting that I actually forgot or that something came up that completely got in the way and mostly it's just because of taking on you know too much yeah um and so yeah I can't it's really really hard to keep up with with like, everything all the, the admin <laughs> the admin of parents it's not only it's admin it's your home as well because you can of course, take care of, a, of uh, what she's gonna eat every day yeah. <laughs> and it's that right yeah. and then uh, keep the house going and uh, yes. if you're working Keep the work, work uh, going, yeah. and then on top of that, the social life with your little kid. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. And it's we're insane. so lucky to have Nanny. Oh yeah. yeah. But this, I think, and they deserve their own day as well. Nanny Appreciation Day must be celebrated in this country. Hundred percent. I, I think, uh, yeah, especially in this country, like we are relying a lot yeah. like, on them, and they're great. Like they're. Um, you have a good experience. Oh yes. 
Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm very lucky. She's very happy with us, and we are very happy with her as well. Uh, also, another topic, right? Like, in, especially yeah. in this region, because it could be like very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Heard. I heard other stories, but um, again, it's you trying to come up with a balance of everything and trying to put that little pieces together so make to make your new life definitely uh, definitely right. using whatever resources because going back to why self-care is so important for motherhood and so i think it's helpful to just briefly say what we mean by self-care so self-care is basically taking care of the self so it's not necessarily although it can be but it's not necessarily about going to the salon or getting yeah. a massage or getting mani pedi it's about taking care sometimes of sometimes you go i think i feel you go back to basics like yes. this is where the nutrition is very important it was very important for me during mm -hmm. this time you need the right foods to continue your 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 journey your mm -hmm. day by day mm -hmm. uh, and especially with them i'm so I, I, i'm really lucky that i was working working for keika and the, the plan was always there like doesn't matter what happened or how messy the morning could be. I had something to eat that is the right thing to eat. So it was, for me, it was the 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 one thing less I have mm -hmm. to think about. And you guys do a, a motherhood uh, one as well, don't you? Like a uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I never change my my normal meals. life. You could mm -hmm. you could always uh, like uh, you know like. Um, uh, personalize yours mm -hmm. and everything but for me the most important was like uh, I had something ready mm -hmm. to eat in two minutes like put mm -hmm. in a minute in the microwave it's done mm -hmm. it's healthy it's it's, it's it's nice for me one le one thing less to think mm -hmm. about in that period was this lifesaver lifesaver mm -hmm. and it's like as basic as that like mm -hmm. you are looking to self care mm -hmm. into those basic lines you know like exactly. you're talking about like sometimes you don't have time to shower mm -hmm. like you are trapped in mm -hmm. a dynamic that you cannot go to the toilet for two minutes you know yeah. like you yeah. are and it's, in, it's it's incredible how this happened i couldn't believe this from my friends were like how how for me this is a basic thing that you need to do when you are a new mom you are stuck and this little dynamic, uh, somehow, you have no time to shower. You have no time to I remember those days when and it was like probably the first month. Yes. Where it would be midday or maybe even like 1 p.m., 2 p.m. Yeah. And I was still in my pajamas. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the house was, because mm -hmm. I first started without a nanny as well, mm -hmm. um, which was a very interesting experience. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad I did it because I kind of... You got I got I got the experience, so the full experience. <laughs> but it was really, really hard, and I think, and I think all the attention goes to the baby from a lot of people around you, and so sometimes just like when, whenever there is a new mom around, I think just like the simplicity of yeah. how are you doing? Can I bring you a meal? Oh, can I get you like something? Or as a present, can I just get you some? Can I can I give you give you food at present? Yeah, you know? yeah. I remember like, one of the uh, best gifts I received was like a little basket uh -huh. with uh, little things for the baby, but then snacks for you for you, like yeah. uh, some cookies and some like energy nice. bites and so uh, yeah. beautiful. I was like, this is the best present ever, and I repeated that. And after I use it for my friends that become moms. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's the best because you you're That's right. Sweet. Like you completely forget about yourself. And it's naturally coming in, in the brain. Your brain changes. Yes. To to that. So it's like uh, again, the less things that you need to think about during that period, the best. Absolutely. The best. Absolutely. So yeah. absolutely. Anything that helps take care of take care of the body and the mind, and it's all it's all connected. Well, and even. Even just like someone coming and helping you declutter yeah. and let's do some laundry and you know because we I, guess, I think it's helpful to just you know say that like not everyone might have uh, family around especially in yes. Dubai or like uh, you know lots of expats and or this COVID uh, period right? and being like, away some, some, yes. some countries are very difficult to get people yes to come them, so. yeah and so friends become our family yeah. and so that. Like some of those again very basic things that 
maybe grandma would do or maybe you know sister would do mm-hmm. you know we have to take care of, of each other, other and yeah. be there yeah, when, when there's a new mom so next time yeah. you wonder like what to do for your new for your with your friend yeah. who just had a baby just go there hold the baby for 15 minutes Tell she will appreciate it do whatever you want <laughs> to do, do whatever you want just sit there with your phone Play yeah. Candy Crush, it doesn't yeah. matter, like, she's gonna appreciate it. <laughs> exactly. Speaking about having friends around, do you feel as moms that there is a lot of competition for your children to be ideal or, you know, like, oh, by this age, they should have achieved this, <laughs> but they didn't achieve it. And then the your friends song. are telling you, like, no, you're doing this wrong. Like, you get advice from parents, that's fine, but you even get unsolicited advice from people who don't even have children who are telling you like oh your kid is very badly behaved do something about it what do you do you oh, feel pressured do you feel <laughs> do you feel pressured do you feel upset do you how do you how do you react to situations like that mm. mentally first before you Act. voice it yes you go first yeah <laughs> i literally don't give <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. I don't. I think like uh, uh, your family is your family, your kids are your kids, everybody. I got us, uh, yeah, no, I got these um, opinions and comments from everywhere. Um, and I just say, like, you know what? She is who she is. She's unique. She's going to learn stuff at her own rhythm, and I'll be there to support her. Mm-hmm. Period. And it's very it's difficult. You have to be like prepared for that because it's gonna be like and uh, again and again and again and again and, and it's not gonna stop. And I think like uh, even when you go to co- when she goes to college, if she decides to go, it's gonna be the same. Like there's gonna be mm-hmm. someone there mm-hmm. telling you like, oh, she you should do that. Yeah, you should do this. You should do this. Um, I would say leave it on the side mm-hmm. and take your own, you know, like your own own path. Mm-hmm. And decide by yourself. It takes a lot of uh, strength and confidence yeah. to to stay there and to not get easily moved. Uh, yeah mm-hmm. moved around and pulled into different directions. Um, I can't say that I have the same ego strength um, to that extent. Uh, for me, it's definitely been a journey. I'm I'm I do easily get sweared into directions around. Oh, like I, I'll give you an example. I have a I have a really dear friend whose son is the same age as my son, and my son has special needs, so he has dwarfism, and he's much you know shorter than uh, mm-hmm. average. Uh, he also had some uh, speech delays, and it was definitely uh, I just get goosebumps sometimes talking about it. It was definitely a journey, kind of um, on its own, to be. Um, just there for your own kid and think of them as they're unique and mm. and just figuring out what works and one of my dear dear friends who also happens to be a psychologist who's super supportive and uh, has been nothing but uh, positive impact in my life uh, and it's not what she says it's what I observe mm-hmm. so when I see like her son who's like this much taller than my son, and they're the exact same age. They were born on the same day at the same hospital and rooms next to each other. I'm not kidding. You know? <laughs> yes, same, uh, like within a few hours difference. And so from the beginning, it's like naturally you will compare. You can't help it because they're exactly the same age and we're really good friends and all that. We're pregnant at the same time. And so just seeing him being taller, stronger, more verbal, and just naturally I can't help but to compare. and there is some sadness that comes with that and so I just want to normalize that when um, we do get in those situations where we have special needs children when we are comparing our kids to other kids on the playground Mm -hmm. I hear this a lot from moms with children with autism who socially experience this if their kids are uh, socially uh, you know not neurotypical and acting like all the other kids and there comes a lot of kind of Sometimes it's shame true. even with mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. so just being able to work through that, and it's not that you shouldn't have these feelings, it's just kind of being aware that it's it's okay to have these feelings and then you can you can deal with that. Yeah. But then it's not it's not that I'm going to translate that onto 
putting that all onto my kid or putting it onto me mm -hmm. to then have like the perfect family because we're not right nobody is nobody so. is um, so it's it's just about navigating it and being aware of it, um, and and then and then counting counting the blessings, like yeah. being grateful, um, remembering the small things that we're grateful for, like the cuddles, the way he smiles at me, and how funny he is, and uh, his like the the cutest bum in the world, you know, that I just want to tweet all the time. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and everything like he's on he's on your path, right? Like he's on your way to yeah. discover the world. Yeah, of course. It's, yeah. It's important. Yeah. So this is what you will need to focus on. Yeah. And I think having community for that is really important. Mm. Like having other moms. So I a while back I wrote a blog post for a, a community called Extra Lucky Moms are based in the US. But it's um uh, they are so lovely and there's like moms with all sorts of children if there are special needs that are part of that community. And so sometimes also really you know what we call weird and wonderful stuff, like really rare kind of diseases yeah. and things like that. So that's that's I think really helpful to have other moms to talk to. Community. Community, absolutely. So as we close slowly, I think coming to a close, maybe we can just each uh, talk about what are uh, three secrets to a more balanced motherhood, to a more balanced life. Um, what what is name your top three things that uh, help you to maintain a balanced life as a mom? Uh, yeah, I'd say first of all, be able to talk about mm -hmm. anything to someone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, find find that community. Yeah. Find that uh, relate to. I mean, in my case, like some uh, other friends, we became mom at the same time. So we have like little groups and we share like, okay, this is a new virus. There, like, this is what happened. Okay. Like, anything, <laughs> anything, uh, anything that we want to call anything. Yeah, this is like, normal. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Send a picture of this. Yes, this is this like normal, or is this normal? How, how am I feeling yeah. because X or Y? Like be able to express it. I think is the is 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 one of the keys. Uh, find that little community that supports you that are in the same um, situation or not mm -hmm. maybe different but they can you know like contribute like positively to where you are mm -hmm. um, I uh, also listen to a couple of podcasts uh, oh I love podcasts yeah, yeah. I, I never heard a podcast before until mm -hmm. I reached to this stage and it helped me a lot like you find like whatever you need to hear what you need to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, like you need to listen what what you need, and um, and then just feeling like it's, you're doing great. Like it's fine. Everything is gonna be fine. Everything will pass through the all the stages, and things will happen. Uh, another thing, a very important thing, is like take take a break. Mm -hmm. This could be so super overwhelming and. As you like, mm -hmm. I also took work as my mini vacation. <laughs> And sometimes I feel guilty because I want to go work to work because I don't I don't want to say like you know like right, yeah because it, it can it can be like super overwhelming it can be like um uh, uh, I don't know like tiring as levels that you never imagined so uh, take a break it's okay she's not gonna it's not gonna nothing's gonna happen mm -hmm. go to the cinema with your partner go to have a day like. Or do nothing. Sometimes we just sit in the couch. She's in the park with the nanny, and we're with our phones, just laying down there, mm -hmm. doing nothing. Do it. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's important. And also, I need to I need to uh, say this like Keiko, um, the guys were super supportive with with, with me. I'm and so glad you mentioned that. So in work, yeah. like, I think it's very it's, it's important to put this out there because um, um, you know all this um, situation where the uh, women cannot be at work or you know like the, the, the balance the work balance um, the guys Mark and Andreas were 
awesome uh, with me. They're like super supporting uh, with me and the rest of the women that are moms in the Their company. Parents, their parents, their parents, right? yes, they, they, they get, get it. it. Yeah. They they're related. They and they, they yeah. So I, I need to I need to say this like thanks guys. It's yeah, the compassion awesome. yeah. honestly is so important. Yeah. So your top three were the first one was community, social community. support. Educating yourself, listening to podcasts, yeah. hearing what you need to hear, and, and taking a break. break, and then yeah. obviously having work as a as a supportive system in your life. Part of your balance as yes. well. Take it as your balance. As well. Absolutely. Do not stop. Like it might be for other cases, like women who uh, maybe don't work. It's mm -hmm. fine, but find that part of uh, the society that complements you. Like things that you like to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like, mm -hmm. yes, I'm a full, full time mom, it's fine, but mm -hmm. you might find like something that you really enjoy your life, right? Amazing. Amazing, amazing. For me, um, so it changes with different phases of my kids' uh, age and, and where they're at. Um, and so uh, obviously when they're smaller and when they're babies, the needs are different. I feel like it's more physical. Yeah. It's the physical exhaustion of, you know, the breastfeeding and the work and all of that and the changes in the body and all that. So rest and sleep, those were the more important things. And now I would say uh, some of the super basic stuff is just moving whenever I can. Like even if I'm in the office, because my job is super sedentary, so I'm sitting all the time. Obviously with therapy, it's like you're, you're in my office right now. So it's like, well, sitting like this for hours on end. And so just sometimes stretching. Doesn't have to be rigorous exercise, but just stretching, moving the body, mm -hmm. getting up from the screen, away from the screen, moving a little bit. Um, mindfulness, I've always been a meditator and that has been a constant in my life. So even if it's just a simple one minute, taking a pause, just breathing slowly, and it's super simple. You breathe in and you breathe out and you just focus on slowing down the exhale. Like, just bringing myself back to mm -hmm. my breath, which is, it keeps it super simple. It's like no matter what the noises are and what is happening and what urgent thing is going on, that coming back to the breath is something that can keep me anchored in the present. Mm -hmm. And so mindfulness and meditation, I'm a huge supporter of it and the science behind it is, you know, pretty, pretty mm -hmm. clear. Um, and then the third thing has been, God, oh, there's so many different things, but the third thing I would mention right now is just, you know, talking. Like just, you know, it's like you said, good. like just having people that you can reach out to, yeah. whether, whether it's therapy or, you know, but therapy is not necessarily affordable for everyone. And that's why work and having good insurance and supportive employers that want to cover therapy is, is obviously huge. but. Um, but even talking, I'm really lucky I have a lot of therapist friends, so I, <laughs> no one's going to give me bad advice. <laughs> so anyone I pick up and want to talk to, it's always going to be a good listening ear and it's not going to be like telling me what to do. It's yes, just going to yeah. be someone that's going to listen. And so, um, and investing in, uh, in, in my own well-being, in whatever way that looks like, yeah. you know, so taking that time because yeah, ultimately we can show up. Um, happier for for our babies when we are feeling more whole, yes. and it's not a and it's not a state of perfection that we need to achieve, right? It's like we're always going to fall out of balance and then try to come back to it. But that's an important thing. Like how do you find your way to go back and continue? Right. True. Yeah. One last question before we close to all expecting moms, to new moms, to experienced moms. What is the best part of motherhood that you should look forward to? I mean, I know your children are young and there might be mothers whose children are older and they've, you know, they've left the nest or whatever. But for any new moms or even women thinking about wanting to have kids, what's the best part about motherhood? You have both have to pick one each. You yeah. cannot you cannot pick five points. It's for one definitely, each. Definitely not the sleepless nights. <laughs> One thing that is the best about motherhood, I think there's just something about mothering and I, I feel like uh, 
Um, I don't know, as a mom, I just feel wiser and <laughs> I just feel, I just feel like, uh, you do right I, have, <laughs> I know, I just feel like I have like some, some wisdom to embark, you know, that, that there's something that uh, I, I definitely felt like it, it Im improved my life in many ways. I'm not saying that that's true for everyone, but I feel like in my case, just like something about motherhood and being a mother and it's like a feminine power of some sort, you know, <laughs> especially if we don't look at it through the lens of, you know, traditional or ancient ways of, you know, of, of and by ancient, I don't mean like indigenous, I mean more like uh, non, not so modern motherhood, which was about just, you know, pretty uh, old school ways of living or being. If there is that healthy relationship mm -hmm. and there is, you have choices and you can still go out in the world and do the things you care about and then come back to your nest and and be a mother i think that's awesome. wonderful yeah. it's an awesome thing for me i would say uh looking at the world again through those eyes is is, is just it has no prices mm -hmm. like uh mm -hmm. it's just you're rediscovering everything every mm -hmm. single thing to those little eyes and then and that's that's the most Powerful, I think. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's the thing. Any messages for Mother's Day to mums? Any advice? It there. <laughs> <laughs> <They'll make> it. <laughs> what well, about just, you? Um, just I, I adore you from the bottom of my heart for uh, doing what you do, and every day should be uh, appreciated, and moms should be appreciated every day, and. Uh, I want to say, yeah, just I hope that you can you can say that to yourself and, you know, just every day look in the mirror, tell yourself how much, how grateful you are for who you are and practicing that gratitude for uh, for yourself. And, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Fun, right? Thank you for joining Happy us. Happy, 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 Mother's Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day.